Carrying out the deadly school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018 will be sentenced to life in prison this week. It's a verdict that did not sit well with many families who lost loved ones in the massacre. The jury recommending life without parole because they could not unanimously agree on the death penalty. Before he is sentenced, the families of the 17 people he murdered will finally have the chance to face him in court. They'll be able to speak and tell him how they feel and speak their peace. Joining me now to share her thoughts on all of this. Debbie Hickson, who lost her husband in that shooting now almost five years ago. Debbie, thank you so much for being here, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. We know your husband, Chris, was shot trying to save his students. What has this trial been like for you, and what does it finally feel like to be at this moment, to be up against Tuesday now? Uh, it's been excruciating to sit through all of the details of everything that happened that day, all of the things that happened leading up to that day, and things that could have changed the trajectory of what happened. Um, my feeling coming into this week is that we finally are going to have the opportunity to say our piece, shut this chapter, and move on and try to find some kind of peace and some kind of beginning of grieving. I've said it a number of times. I think being in this place and waiting and waiting and waiting for justice to happen doesn't really allow you to even start the grieving process because you're just angry all the time. Mm. So my hope is that on Tuesday, or I'm going to guess maybe Wednesday when the um, sentencing is finalized that we can all shut this chapter and move on to the next step of grieving. I hope that for you and for these families. And we know we've been speaking with so many families forever impacted by this tragedy, hoping the man responsible would be given the death sentence. But because the jury could not uh, unanimously agree, he instead faces life without parole. What is your feeling here? Do you feel justice is being served? You know, I... Um, I, I don't believe he got the justice that he deserved. And there's no way that anyone could come to the conclusion that any mitigating circumstances outweighed the heinous way that he murdered these people. He went back and killed my husband. My husband would have survived um, the initial shots. He came back and shot him a third time, point blank in the chest. Um, but you know, we, this is where we're at, right? And I, either way for me, he will become a number on Wednesday and he will cease to, to exist for me. So whether it was the death penalty or life in prison, this chapter has to close. Yes, yes. Can you share with us, do you know what you're planning to tell him when you see him face to face in court this week? Yeah, I've, I've actually been writing it down because I kind of want to get, I don't want to say bad words in court. Mm. <laughs> and I you know, kind of want to get a sense of what I want to say. And really, I just want to say to him that I, I don't wish anything for him. I don't, he, he will not exist for me after I finish what I have to say on Tuesday. And we will move on. We will honor our loved ones with positive action, with the light that they brought to the world and never ever think about the ugliness and darkness of what took them away. Yes. Finally, what would you like us to know about Chris? Chris was one of those people that always made you feel like family. He gave you a sense of security and he filled a room when he walked into the room. He was, I always say he was an extraordinary man living an ordinary life. Mm. And he's missed so much every day, not just by our family, by the community. I, everywhere I go, someone has a story to share about Chris and how he went out of his way to help them or make them feel better or sit with them when they just needed someone to listen to them. And that, that person, that life that we had together, it was stolen from us. And that's something that's um, always going to stay with us. But he was a light in this world. And we will always honor him by continuing to shine that light. Absolutely. Debbie Hickson, I truly appreciate your time. I will be thinking about you this week. And, and I wish for you this new chapter and, and this healing that is to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too.
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.